Hi, my name is Stefano Cadario, and I'm Director for Software Product Management in the IoT Lano business at ARM. Today I will talk about ARM virtual hardware and how they can enable IoT developers to move to new cloud-based development practices such as continuous integration and MLOps. Let's start with a bit of history. When talking about the Internet of Things, we can identify three distinct phases to the evolution of the Internet of Things. The first one started several decades ago with the introduction of the microprocessor. This phase led to most devices we use every day to have an embedded microcontroller integrated. The second phase is interconnectivity, where all those devices could talk to the internet or between each other to coordinate activities and processes. Third and last step is intelligence. This is the phase we are in today and the one that is going to have the biggest impact. With the help of connectivity and ML, we expect to see a revolution of technologies and services across billions and billions of devices, from the edge all the way to the cloud. But how does it show up in a real world scenario? Let's take a look at an example of a production plant. The first phase is about devices controlled electronically. For example, the advancement of the production plan is controlled by sensors positioned along the lines ventilation is regulated based on the temperature and so on. This is the basic scenario we have been used for several years and I will refer to it as a traditional embedded. The interconnectivity enables all devices to talk and coordinate with each other. Multiple machines can exchange data to synchronize operations and all the data collected from all the machines can be uploaded to the cloud and used for analytics and management purposes. The next and final level is intelligence. Imagine a system that is able to improve how a part is designed or mounted based on the data acquired on the production line. Adapting the speed of the production line based on various characteristics such as knowledge and experience of the operator, automatically optimizing the environmental condition to maximize the comfort of the workers. The possibilities are infinite and we are right at the verge of this revolution. But all of this is not free. Interconnectivity and especially intelligence comes with a steep increase in complexity of the software. With the introduction of connectivity, multiple factors need to be taken in consideration while developing software, such as security, over-the-air updates, and networking stack. In a rich operating system, such as Linux or Windows, most of those issues are resolved at the OS level and abstracted from the application running on it. For embedded, this is not always the case, and software engineers are required to manually integrate libraries from different vendors and resolve the potential incompatibilities with the hardware they are working on. This problem manifests even more considerably when security flows are found and one or more components of the software stack needs to be updated. Time is critical, and the engineers will not only need to have a robust, robust way to manage the components of the software stack, but more importantly, processes to handle update requests and deployments at scale across the fleet of devices in the field. If we add machine learning to the equation, requirements for updates go far beyond security as models are constantly refreshed based on new data acquired, even multiple times a day. As the chart on the right side of the screen shows, we can't consider IoT and ML as a simple incremental change in complexity of the software, but rather a major disruption on how traditional embedded software is managed throughout the entire life cycle. Before deep diving into the latest and greatest practices to develop software, it's worth looking at how traditional and better software was, or often still is, developed. The vast majority of disconnected devices out there, let's say your traditional washing machine or coffee maker, has been flashed with a tested and validated version of the firmware during the manufacturing process. As the device doesn't have any internet connection or ability to be updated, from a software perspective, the job is done. It's what we can call a deploy and forget model. The software team tasked to develop the software often move on to a new project, and both the functionality as well as the security, security is frozen in time. Any software update will require massive effort, both in terms of testing, but most importantly, deployment, as it requires a manual processes and physical access. Another aspect is that the software team or the release engineer is in control. There isn't any new firmware getting released and flashed into a new device that doesn't go through the software team. Testing is limited during the development, and the majority of the effort 
is reserved at validating the entire functionality before release. Because of the relatively small attack surface requiring physical access to the device, security is at best an afterthought, but often not even considering the development. The assumption is that the device will not be compromised or that the risk is so low that it's just not worth tackling it. When we look at enabling devices with intelligence, we should consider a very different type of development flow. One that considers a close integration with the cloud services, both for data collection, as well as training and develop deployment of machine learning models to the edge. If we start from the left, we see data stored in the cloud used for the training of the neural network. The network, the network models, needs to go through a process of optimization, such as pruning and quantization, to reduce its size to fit the constraints of edge devices. The network model then needs to be integrated with the rest of the software, patched, packaged in a binary image, and finally deployed to the fleet of devices. The devices in the field need to be monitored, and additional data might be collected to improve the performance and quality of the machine learning model. As it should be evident from this chart, development practices that work for traditional embedded are no longer suitable to fit this more complex flow. The intelligent edge requires a more modern development flow, a new paradigm which creates the flexibility to support an era of intelligence at the edge. We need cloud-based development practices for IoT. Traditional development focuses on the application first and then the build and the deploy infrastructure later. Cloud-based development is the notion that we consider all factors from day one, from ML training to software development, from over-the-air updates to data collection and device management. Cloud-based technologies enable developers to build, manage, and run software in the modern and dynamic environment offered by the cloud. But what are the main characteristics? First of all, robust automation and testing allow engineers to make high-impact changes frequently and predictably with minimum toil. DevOps and MLOps automate not only the software development process, but also allow data scientists to independently tune and update ML models without needing the software team to manually perform the integration with the firmware. Last but not least, as devices are connected to the internet and exposed to threats, security is addressed from cloud all the way through the edge. So cloud-based development seems to solve our problems. What's the catch? Well, unlike cloud applications, we can't simply run IoT application across virtual machine or containers. We are bound to real hardware. First of all, hardware is difficult to scale. Although IoT boards and chips are relatively cheap, building and managing board farms is very expensive, requires a certain expertise, often only available in big teams. And if you ever had to rely on limited resources for testing and build, you know that compute and testing resources are always a bottleneck to add more tests and reduce the time to execute entirely nightly or weekly test suite. Moreover, procurement can be sometimes very challenging, especially in this period of chip shortage, or even impossible when the chip hasn't been taped out yet. Another issue is the limited ability to reproduce and test software under special conditions on corner cases, such as testing sensors at the boundaries or simulating intermittent internet connection. Finally, IoT boards are not available in public clouds, so running firmware natively in the cloud is just not feasible. ARM virtual ARM hardware are a simple and scalable way to remove dependency from hardware and unlock cloud-based development. You can imagine ARM virtual hardware targets as the equivalent of virtual machines, but for IoT. ARM virtual targets provides a functionally accurate representation of an ARM-based SOC, simulating the behavior visible from a software perspective, but abstracting the complexity around the underlying hardware. Unlike EDA simulators and emulators, virtual targets are developed independently from the RTL and are generally available ahead of the IP release. ARM has more than 15 years experience developing accurate models of ARM IP for both pre-Silicon development as well as EDA verification flow. And we are very excited to offer the same capabilities directly to the software developers who can leverage this for IoT. ARM virtual hardware targets are a simple Linux application and run both on your local machine as well as in the cloud. ARM virtual hardware go beyond just simulating the ARM CPU and provide mechanisms to accurately simulate the memory subsystem as well as the peripherals. As such, 
on which are harder targets are suitable for both bare metal development, up to kernel and application development on rich OSs such as Linux and Android. ARM provides reference design for the IoT, but partners can extend the basic platform to more accurately simulate the characteristic of their SOC in use. The vast majority of ARM IP portfolios available as components to build your own ARM virtual hardware, including Cortex CPUs, GPUs, as well as system IP and interfaces. If you take a look again at the software development flow we saw earlier, we can immediately notice how virtual hardware fit into it. On the left side, Virtual targets can be leveraged to estimate the performance of an unoptimized machine learning model directly in the cloud without the need to test it on actual hardware. This enables data scientists to rapidly experiment and test different network configuration and optimization, optimization tactics. For software development, beyond the clear advantage of being able to develop software without having a board on your desk, a major advantage is the ability to run and scale the CI infrastructure in the cloud with potentially thousands of virtual boards being launched in the cloud in seconds and all the suite of tests running completely in parallel. No more bottlenecks due to broken boards or faulty virtual suppliers. Let's take a look at a demo on how ARM virtual hardware target works. To demonstrate the capabilities of virtual hardware target, we will use one of the examples included in the ARM ML embedded evaluation kit. The evaluation kit contains several examples, networks and use cases, ported and optimized for the ARM Ethos U55 MPU, such as image classifications using mobile net v2 and keyword spotting using wave to letter. To avoid wasting time, I already created a Docker container on my machine. downloaded the ARM virtual hardware targets for Coston 300 and the code of the evaluation kit and built it using ARM Compiler 6. So I have an image ready to be executed. Let's start the ARM virtual hardware. Using this Linux command, I can load the memory and run the binary image have a preset configuration file, which will be, we will change later. The window on the right represents the virtual board with a simulated display at the bottom. The second window in the center represents the new art we can interact with. As you can see, the example firmware is now running and it shows a list of options to choose from. Let's pick option one from the menu. This option simply runs an inference using MobileNet v2 network and uses one of the images in the database as input. The display on the bottom right shows the image being analyzed. After the inference is complete, the output shows it as being recognized as tabby cat, Egyptian cat with the corresponding correspond probability. Let's do a second run. This time the input is an image of a dog, a pack to be precise. It's worth noting that the firmware is basically the same that will run on the FPGA boards. Let's stop the binary now and slightly change the configuration to accurately simulate the performance of the Ethos U55. Unlike the model for the CPUs, ARM Virtual Hardware can provide quasi-cycle accurate performance reports for the Ethos U55 MPU. Let's run the same example. As the simulation takes more time, I accelerated the video to go straight to the end of the inference. Once completed, we expect exactly the same results as before, but this time the console should report a valid number of active cycles of the MPU, which can be utilized to accurately estimate how fast this specific inference would run on the Ethos U55 without the need for hardware or, or an FPGA platform. Some of our partners are already successfully using virtual hardware. I want to highlight at least two examples. The first one is Cambridge Consultants, who ported an application for early detection of tuberculosis from the cloud 
to a call center 300 based system. The team at Cambridge Consultants was able to demonstrate a concept system using virtual hardware, dramatically reducing the cost to develop such prototype, and in doing so, providing an application example well before any silicon was available. The link at the bottom provides more information on this application. The other example is TensorFlow, an ML framework from Google, widely used both in mobile and for tiny ML. The team at Google and ARM were able to develop and optimize the library for Cortex-M55 as an Ethos U55 much earlier in the process. Furthermore, thanks to the integration of ARM virtual hardware into the CI infrastructure, any code changes into the repository is automatically tested against the virtual Colston 300 instance directly in the cloud, providing a much more scalable way to provide immediate feedback to the developer if the code is broken. Both examples show how ARM virtual hardware is used for soft development, but what about MLOps? Let's hear from our friends at Edge Impulse. Hi, my name is Jan Jungboom, and I'm the co-founder and CTO of Edge Impulse. Edge Impulse is the leading platform for embedded machine learning with over 40,000 projects created. And we're very excited about the launch of ARM's virtual hardware, as this gives us the opportunity to know on-device performance without having to run on a real device. And that is crucial for every single one of those 40,000 projects. Um, if you're doing MLOps, whether you're first collecting data, extracting features, or training a neural network, everything needs to fit the latency and memory constraints of your target. And modeling that beforehand is crucial to a successful embedded machine learning deployment. Um, so far, we've already worked with ARM on bringing support for the M55 and U55 to market without even having silicon available. And ARM's virtual hardware has been a tremendous help in doing that. So I can't wait to see what the future brings in the collaboration that we have around the stack. If you want to join the existing users already leveraging ARM virtual hardware for their DevOps or MLOps, now you can. Just go on the ARM virtual hardware website indicated on the screen and follow the instructions to run your own model of Cortex-M55 and Ethos U55 directly in the cloud. You will find tutorials with examples on how to launch your custom instance of ARM virtual hardware as well as guides on how to enhance your CI testing infrastructure through the integration with GitHub Actions. In today's presentation, I talk about the need for a new and more modern development practices due to the increased complexity introduced by IoT and ML, and how cloud-based development addresses some of these challenges. ARM virtual hardware is a fundamental technology to enable effective and scalable software development in the cloud, bridging the existing gap between the real hardware and the cloud-based. The great, the great news is that ARM virtual hardware targets are already available today, and some of our own partners are already using it effectively to develop real-world applications. Please visit the ARM website for more information or get in touch if you want to know more. We are very excited to launch ARM virtual hardware, and we can't wait to see how we use it to design new innovative IoT and ML applications on ARM-based devices. Thank you.